This is, oh yeah, you guys are fucked. I got a <laughs> microphone. <laughs> guys, really quickly, I know we had some stiff competition. This is a diaper panel. Dr. Scholes is doing a great insole one down the <laughs> street. So thanks everyone for choosing diapers. Let me just say, when they pitched me on this, they were like, Sam, what do you think? Dak Shepard, Kristen Bell. I said, oh my God, yeah. Then they're like, okay, but here, diapers. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let me just Google. And I will say, you spend an hour looking into the diaper industry, it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> like, there are questions of monopoly and access and supply chain. I don't know, I geeked out on it. So I'm excited to talk about diapers in earnest with y'all and with y'all as well. Um, a bit about how the conversation will work. Uh, the four of us will talk for about 45 minutes and the last 15 minutes will be audience questions. They'll be here on the screen for me, but we can pick them out together. Um, and there's really no holds barred. I'm so excited to do this. That's so dangerous to say no holds barred <laughs> when my husband has a microphone. I just need you to know that. Can I ask a question unrelated to diapers? We'll get to the diapers. Um, <laughs> I am curious, because South By is such an awesome festival. Could you raise your hand if you live in Austin? I'm just curious how many people the fuck yes. Look at all these. Keep Austin weird. Um, you guys live in the greatest city in America, and I apologize for always so often talking about how great it is and being a part of the people who've moved here. So my apologies, but we're so delighted to be here. Love Austin, but might I also shout out anyone in this room from San Antonio? Anybody? All right. A few folks. I'm from San Antonio. Love both cities. Love both cities. Look, Tim Duncan's here. I from wish. The Spurs. He's Tim, like <laughs> come on stage. <laughs> um, I have a lot of questions for y'all. I might not get to all of them, but we'll get to some. Shall we just jump in? Yeah, let's talk some diapers. I love it. I love it. Talk about dipes. Let's I get want dipes. A thing I always do at the start of my interviews for work is to ask people what their preferred titles are. Like, what do you go by? What do you want to be known as? I know your title, your CEO, but I'm interested. What do the two of you call yourselves these days? There's many options to choose from: actor, host, founder podcaster, musical artist, what do you like most use as your title for you? Mom and dad, um, and to America, if they want it. We kind of have positioned ourselves as mom and dad. Yeah, your local, media. regional, and national mother and father. Yeah. Should we be of service in any way? For you need a, you need a used uh, Kleenex? I got see me, yeah. yeah. Or mom will pull one out of her purse. <laughs> but, um, in essence, if we had to sum up Hello Bello in the most concise way, it is um, mother's ingredients, father's prices. What does that mean? Well, it means mom cares a lot about what goes on the babies. Yeah. I don't give a rip. Uh, on in <laughs> mother them in the gasoline, bottles. but I want it cheap. I want it, ch I want it affordable and accessible. So we make a fun partnership in creating a business together because we are vastly different human beings. We care about much different things. Yeah. Um, I don't think one's superior to the other, but uh, Kristen has always eaten really clean. She's been very conscious of what went on her skin, what went on our baby's skin. And again, I'm just looking at the ones and zeros because okay. we got to get out of this showbiz racket at some point, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the question to really start with, and I've just been thinking about this since I found it out since this panel became an option for me, it was just like, I really want to ask y'all, who was the first person to be like, you know what? Diapers. Because mm. celebrities at your level can do a lot of things. Sexier things. Well, Vodka, you can do tequila. tequila you yeah. can do. You could buy a soccer team. Yeah. You could do an athleisure line. Well, we who was like, you know what? Diapers. Poop your pants business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who had the first spark? It was neither of us, actually. It was a, 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 a time where this perfect meeting intersected where we had just had kids. We were in the first couple of months of raising our first child, and we were going from, you know, L.A. boutique to L.A. baby boutique and buying everything that we thought was great for our baby, and we weren't looking at the receipts. And then one night it occurred to us, wow, we're living a life where we're not looking at the receipts, which neither of us grew up with. Mm -hmm. 
And we thought we're very, very grateful for that, but it does still seem unfair that our friends and family don't have the accessibility or affordability for getting great, great baby products on the market. And then we were approached by our other two co-founders who were talking about that exact idea at the same time. And so we made sure that all of our sort of North Stars aligned in that yeah. it would be an absolutely divine product and it would be better for the earth and it would basically have the, the North star of no one should ever have to choose between their baby or their budget. I've been a longtime ambassador for Baby to Baby, which works yeah. with kids in Los Angeles on or below the poverty line and seen way too many stories of like parents that I've seen in physical real life yeah. having to wring out a diaper because they, yeah. can, they need to use it tomorrow. Yeah. And I just think if I can be a part of fixing that or, or helping that situation at all, why, why wouldn't we do it? So it was kind of the right timing for us. We yeah. certainly weren't dreaming of have but also, if you visit. were, fine. It worked out, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when you have kids, it's like getting bit by one of the mushroom zombies in um, The Last of Us. Now, yeah. all you talk about is your kids with everyone else ad nauseum, and non-parents are w looking for an exit. So, inevitably, we would be talking, and yeah, we're saying, like, oh, you should get these wipes, you should get these things, blah, blah, And then we were kind of like, oh, this is a bummer. All this stuff we're getting is crazy expensive, and it doesn't seem like it has to be. Yeah. And then we were in this crazy, fortunate situation where we can call Walmart, and they'll take a meeting with us, if for no other reason to get the Kristen to leave a, a Frozen song on their voicemail. Um <laughs> It's a powerful door we Use opener. what we've got, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Listen. And so we collectively thought, you know, we have an opportunity to start at a scale that would be so massive that we could immediately make it incredibly affordable. We were yeah. so much cheaper than all of our competitors with similar quality. Yeah and commitment to everything that... Yeah. Because that was, like he said before, a, a primary objective. There are uh, no, no shade on anyone in the baby space. There's a lot of great people doing great things out there, but... Sometimes you have to you have to look at the price tag and it couldn't it doesn't even have to be unbelievably expensive. If it's two dollars more than you can budget that, that much, you can't buy it. Well, and this is the thing that I really want to get into, like the precariousness of the diaper industry. I don't have kids, so I don't think about diapers. I start getting ready for this, I'm like, oh, snap. The diaper business is crazy. Let's talk more about it. I did not know somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of the market is controlled by two companies. And I also did not know, in spite of, you know, the amount of diapers that I see in the store when I go to the store, something like one in three families aren't getting enough diapers. When you're helping them get into this space, what do you tell them the industry is like? Yeah, no, I think we refer to them fondly as Pam and Kim um, <laughs> in, in our business. And so when we saw that there just weren't a lot of options for people looking for those better for you products at better for you prices, and that was demonstrated when we launched at Walmart. That first year we grew the natural category in diapers massively um, as we are giving consumers a choice um, for the first time to really not have to make that choice. Go ahead and brag by 20%. <laughs> yeah. And um, what we also realized to your point is how pervasive diaper need is. And Kristen talked about it earlier, but you know, one in three families struggle to pay for diapers. And during the pandemic, that number got closer to almost one in two. And there aren't government programs that help address that need. And again, if, if you can't afford diapers for your child, you can't put them in childcare and you can't go to work. So it becomes a systemic problem. So as we were building this company, it really was how do we address, you know, more than just, you know, providing people diapers at an accessible price point, but the diaper need that is truly a big issue in the country. Yeah. What has surprised the two of you the most about the diaper industry as you've learned about it and been in it? I mean, every article I read about, I'm, I'm obsessed now. I'm like, oh, the diaper market. Like, where's the docu-series, man? This, this is, like, intense. <laughs> like what is, ice truckers, but for diapers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I know what Harvestly sustained fluff pulp is now. Yeah. Like, the, all of the things that I know about the diaper industry now, it, it shocks me. Because I don't yeah. feel like I have a well-rounded education in anything. I know, like, 10% of everything. And I'm, like, floating by on that. But I now know quite a bit about diapers and thankfully with Erica's help and the other brilliant people on our team we were able to isolate not just the 
holes that we saw in the market for the consumers, but the the holes that were within how companies produce them, like mm. on our like in our diaper facility, like when you cut out the diaper, there's little tabs on the end, and most people just throw them away. I think we're the only company that doesn't because we created a cutter shape that zigzags it that makes sure that there actually is no waste. So we have a huh. zero waste diaper facility, and it's run all on renewable power. Like all of the decisions that we were like, well, in a dream world, what would we do? And we just tell those things to Erica, and then she executes them. I love it. I love it. I love it. What By the way, if you the- want to get Kristen Bell revved up before bed, talk about zero waste manufacturing, <laughs> and pants are flying off. Well, and, and I want to talk more about y'all's diaper plant later, because on top of just being zero waste, it is, and correct me on this, the only actually independent diaper company in the country. What the hell? What yeah. diapers Manufactured are crazy from about? design to distribution yeah. in the country, yeah. How does it usually work? Well, I don't want to say anything negative about any of our competitors, but I will say the show Severance is loosely based on one of these. That's, that's <laughs> I, You can infer whatever you need to from that, but I will say that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is the tradition, how, how crazy, if you can sum up, how crazy is the usual diaper market conveyor belt? Like the logistics of making a diaper, is it usually just incredibly hard or is it pretty easy? I only know ours, but I bet you can speak to yeah. like, seeing, have you is seen like one a lot into of any other of people's the diaper conveyor belts? Yeah, under the veil of night, have you snuck into any P&G facilities and <laughs> my, scoped my their tech? My first job was at Procter & Gamble working on the diaper line, so I have. Actually okay, okay, in. tell us. Um, but yes, it is our machines. I mean, first of all, I think we have the only purple diaper machine in the world, so um, we're very proud we of that. We painted everything in really fun colors. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you're a diaper company, you've got to have a fun place to work. So our factory not only um, makes awesome diapers, but it looks on brand, which is really cool. And I have never seen another diaper facility like it, but it is in Waco, Texas. So it's not too far from here. Shout out Waco. Um, Shout out to Waco. Um, We brought in over 200 jobs into the community. We actually were able to hire back people that had been laid off that had worked at a former diaper facility there. So it was really cool to open that facility and hire all those people and really bring jobs into the U.S. Um, A lot of people are sourcing diapers from um, overseas. So Uh I want to add, if you're ever in Waco and you're on mushrooms, I implore you to go to our factory because... Can you get in? The first time Kristen and I ever went, we were given an address and we had a rental car and we were driving in this industrial park and we're like looking at numbers for... It's 11,620. And then I go, oh, I wonder if that's it. There's this enormous building with clouds all over it. It looks like a dark Dr. Seuss uh, painting. So again, if you're ever on Boomers in Waco, go get some memorabilia at the factory. You can't miss it. I want to go. Yeah. As now a student of the diaper industry, I actually want to see it. It's a pilgrimage to take. I love it. I love it. I want to talk about the breakdown of leadership with the three of you. From what I can surmise, y'all are a lot more than just like the spokespeople for this company, but you're also not the CEO. How does that work? Who does what? What is this holy trinity? Who's, who's father, who's son, who's holy ghost? So, uh, oh wow, that's, uh, <laughs> I want holy ghost just cause, okay. cause boo. Uh, <laughs> I will say, Kristen and I had done a lot of kind of brand ambassadorship. We had famously done a lot of Samsung commercials and they were really fun and we got to use our voice a lot, at least in the commercial aspect of writing it and directing it. but. We didn't get to be a part of any decisions aesthetically, what story we're telling, what's the vibe. And I'll say the thing we had the most fun with is like, we're irreverent. We think that the stuff that had been being sold to moms at that point were like, this is this pristine experience that will happen without any spills or shit streaks on anything. And we were like, this is not life as a parent. This is, yeah, it's baloney. So we, we, the first runs, like we designed all the stuff with our friend Ben. Um, we wanted to be super playful. The people we wanted to do partnerships with, like Dr. Seuss and Plato, like for us to be a part of 
making it all the things we love and then talking about it has been so much more fun and rewarding. It's not unlike any other creative endeavor we've got to do. Um, it's, you know, it was wide open and we had so much fun with it, but we don't know anything about running a business. Okay, we got to a little bit of this. But I, but I think the reality is that we're we're storytellers, and yeah. we often sit at home and we think of stories together, or we, you know, tell stories to our kids. And and when you're selling a product, there's a story behind it. You buy things that have meaning to you. Like that's the reason why brands choose a color, choose mm -hmm. a font. Like you look at everything on the shelf, things look very different in the grocery store because they're each telling you a different story. They're giving you a different piece of meaning, and to create a community, particularly because parenting is really fucking hard. It's really, really hard. It's especially hard yeah. when you're isolated. And yeah. those first couple months, you almost everybody is isolated. So to create a community for our parents and then think about what kind of stories, what's the overall story we want to tell? Oh, we want to tell everybody that it is okay that your hands smell like urine and there's avocado on your shirt. Mine too. Me your too. Me too. You know, seven year old still yeah. isn't potty trained. Yeah. Uh, like there's, there's okay things. We're all in this together. Yeah. So we wanted to be a part of like breaking news. It's all okay. We're yeah. here for you. This is your village. But then also with each individual product, sort of like have it be fun and irreverent. So the storytelling is basically where we just basically call Erica up late at night and tell her okay. ideas. Yes. That's Erica, the relationship. Yeah. Erica, tell me what this balances for you. So I would say they are truly the heart and soul of the brand. So I mean, whether it's there is a, you know, things going over in the Ukraine and Kristen wants to send diapers and we work together to make that happen. Or, and Dax will call, he says he doesn't know about business, but he will call me out on anything. So if I start talking about something, he goes, you're not telling me the truth. Um, so he will dive in the weeds with me and really make sure that we are running things properly in the way it should be. And he was just giving us marketing advice on the way over here. So it is truly a team effort. Um, they are really kind of driving the heart and soul of what we do every single day. And then we go make it happen. Hell yeah. This is for all three of you. What's been the hardest day so far for Hello Bello and you and Hello Bello and why? The hardest day. The hardest day yeah. of Hello Bello. Day or stage? Day? You can pit. <laughs> oh, I don't remember any days. <laughs> the um, Obviously, when we, like everyone else, when we went into quarantine, everyone was dealing with COVID. I think what we saw from some competitors was um, the prices went up, upwards of 184% with one of our competitors. Our commitment at this time when we knew it was hardest for everyone to keep making everything when we too had supply chain issues, we too are dealing with all the other things, all the businesses were dealing with keeping our price point. That was almost impossible. And I would say that was the hardest challenge we yeah. we probably face, but we really did a good job. I'm that, proud of everyone. Who that was exactly what I was going to say because when we first when we first went into quarantine, that was I think one of the first phone calls I made yeah. to Hello Bella, where I was like. I just saw an article about diapers. We cannot under any circumstance raise our prices. I don't know what that means for the company. I don't uh. know where that's going to come out of, but we have to, and we have to be ahead of it. We have to actually say to our community, don't worry and not lead it with like, oh, we're some altruistic force. Like, no, we just have to say, don't worry. Yeah. Like, we're going to be stable. We're going to be yeah. here. And we were able to do it. And it was very, very difficult, yeah. but we were able to do it. And it was also a little bit of luck because just prior to COVID, we had bet on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We had said, we really want to have a USA manufacturing facility. We wanted to do design to distribution here in the USA and source local and regional raw materials and just be able to have a better environmental footprint and everything. And we had just started looking at the Waco uh, property and then that was right when all the ports closes and nobody oh, could get anything. Yeah. We look like geniuses yeah. but it was an accident. Hey, I love it. So Erica, yeah. they come to you and they're like it's a pandemic, once in a century pandemic uh, we're going to make this work and we're not going to raise our prices. Go. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you got to execute we that. We build a diaper manufacturing plant. Um, At the, during the peak of the pandemic. During the peak of the pandemic, which I think to that point was the hardest stage of, I mean, in, in a year we put four diaper machines in. We're spitting out over a million diapers a day right now out of that manufacturing. Do they spit out? Oh my God, they you can't out. even see it's them. It's so Yo. fast. Yeah. Just, yeah. It like, might not even punch, be diapers punch. when they showed it to us. To be honest. <laughs> it's so fast. Who knows what's coming out of it? I love but, it. Yeah. I love it. 800 so, diapers a minute. 
I, I'm, I'm not even light. I want to go to the factory. Anywho, you have to execute, build this factory during pandemic and not raise prices. Walk me through briefly the hardest part of making that work. We're in a lot of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut to the chase, Sam. We are. Okay. We are in a lot okay. of debt. If not anyone in the audience has I've five grand is what we're looking uh-huh. for. We think that'll shore up what we need. So then what are you thinking as a CEO of like, debt to expenditure to the, like, I want to just hear what was in your, your mind those first few days, weeks. Yeah. I mean, we had the plans to build the factory. And then when you realize you can't fly the team from Italy in that was supposed to be here and the machines are delayed. And so as to Dax's point, you're seeing the dollar signs rack up and knowing you're trying to control costs. So it was a lot of all hands on deck, a lot of, um, late night war room sessions trying to figure out how we're going to make it happen, but it all came together and it's all, it's all running now. And so that's the exciting part is we came through it in the end and that plant will help us keep diaper prices as low as possible. I want to just dig in a little more cause I'm just curious. What was like your biggest aha moment in that weird time that like fixed a lot of stuff? <laughs> like, no, no, if, we, yeah. if we just do it this way, it'll be bam. Was there a moment like that for you? I mean, I think there were a lot of moments. I think as we looked at our supply chain and realized that in Texas, there's actually a lot of local suppliers that we could switch to and utilize. And so shortened our supply chain lead times. We're really able to um, decrease our carbon footprint, but also, you know, get partners that were excited about building a Texas factory and how they could help us do that. So I think an aha moment was, you know, again, leveraging all the entire community, again, back to the theme of community to build that plant together and make it happen. And they were excited because I want to tell you, when we went to Waco to um, like uh, cut the ribbon basically and saw the facility and it was so cool, the mayor of Waco was there. He handed us a binder of Ooh. potential Real properties. Real estate opportunities. <laughs> Real estate. Did y'all hang with the Magnolia folks? We did. They designed our lobby. Stop. Yes. yes. Chip and Joanna designed the lobby. I'm going to the factory so after this panel. <laughs> Again, grab some shrooms from somebody in the audience. <laughs> You're in Austin. <laughs> It'll amplify the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So you've mentioned community. I've read about this community y'all have with diaper folks. What is a diaper community? Tell me. <laughs> well, I would just say first and foremost... For me, and let me just add, I'm one of my roles is kind of, um, I'm, oh, what am I, the blue collar police? I feel talked down to really easily. I'm insecure. I'm afraid people think I'm stupid. Um, so I have an eye on that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so when I hear the word community, to be honest with you, I'm like, that's a little lofty. And I don't know what does well, that what mean. Can I, but what what else would you call it? Well, this is what I was going to say is, What I actually believe in is so often in life, I'm behind the guy with the diesel truck in the bank system. It's he's rolling smoke. He's got the balls hanging off the back of the bumper. And I'm like, oh, this guy, this guy. And then he pulls over and I see him pull a little person out of the back. And it truly does something to me. I truly melt in a way when I see a guy being a dad to a kid. And I know that feeling. And it's the number one piece of my identity that I cherish. And it is this crazy bond. Like, I am so quick to connect with anyone that's going through the same experience. So when I think about it that way and more of an individual that bond that exists... To me, it only compares to like meeting other people in AA where I'm like, okay, fast track to I Mm. like you. And so Mm. when I see people helping little people, I instantly like them no matter what vehicle they got of. So that aspect, I really do connect with. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing we've been kind of building within our social channels and people posting these shared experiences that we can all relate to in the disasters that happen. So I actually do believe in our community aspect. And I'm kind of cynical about that. No matter what you call it, though, I think that like we believe at the like table of Hello Bello. I know that we all believe that like the parents are the thought leaders of this company. Yeah. Like that's actually what we need to be paying attention yeah. to. Like Dax and I can have a, a you know a dream in the middle of the night and be like, should we do this? And then we're gonna think about it. But what we're gonna do is ask our group, all of these individuals, whether or not they need that. Because the goal with this wasn't just to start something. It was we saw a hole. There was, there was something not being done, and that was yeah. the intersection of affordability, accessibility, and premium quality yeah. for everyone. Yeah. So when we, we, we 
talk to our community a lot. We ask them to post. We like to share all of their crazy stories because we, Dax and I, particularly believe that collective laughter heals everything. Like, laugh at yourself. I also think in, like, you em can. embracing failures, embracing shortcomings, yeah. embracing these things. Um, again, it's the premise of my podcast, which is just, like... Uh, life's a beat down it's messy yeah we all mess up just get rid of the shame yeah. it's safe to talk about it and that same vibe kind of exists you see like the posts are much more about people just owning some hugely embarrassing mix-up they've had you know Kristen fucking burnt our kids favorite what do you even call that? We had a, a we had a wooden reindeer. reindeer. reindeer we in were the house. out we of firewood. No, we had no idea. Oh, wait, that, you just put the reindeer in the fire. Yeah, we had lot. no idea she had developed a relationship. There's a lot more to the story. Reindeer. It was a Christmas decoration. Uh -huh. We were out of firewood. It was like, a, but it was like one that you know they make at the Christmas tree farm but, where you would eventually you put really, it in the recycling. Okay. We're out of firewood. I put it in there. <laughs> I didn't realize she had been like talking to it and serving it food oh for like the last three weeks. <laughs> she saw. She it. came around the corner and it was like her sister was in the fireplace. Ah. She didn't talk to me for like two days. To say nothing of the fact that they had obviously coated it in a fire retardant. So the entire house filled with smoke. Like it was so poisonous <laughs> on top of the, the murder. So that then, yeah. the community built around Hello Bello, parents can talk about things like that. So yes. it's more than just diapers. What are the nuts and bolts of the community, Erica? Because I also read somewhere there's like a TikTok residency happening. Like it's more than just a Facebook group, right? Right. No, I mean, we have a direct consumer business and we have over 100,000 subscribers on that business. So we talk directly to our customer on a daily basis. Um, I always like to say everybody thinks they're trying to strive to be the perfect parent. It's impossible to be a perfect parent, but there's a million ways to be a good one. And if we can help you do that, that's what we're here for. And so with that direct consumer bundle, we're delivering those diapers to your doorstep every week. It comes in a really fun box. We have a lot of fun designing those boxes. Actually, we were just picking up Father's Day box on the All way All the here. boxes turn into different like toys. Like they're the transformers. They're transformer boxes. Oh, that's cool. Yes. So this month's box of lantern. Um, it's been a rocket ship. It's been a race car. Um, so it Transformers has been canceled. Sorry, someone groaned when I said Transformers. Have they been canceled? Okay, I don't. We don't. Ooh, oh, that was uh -oh. a good one. I thought uh -oh. maybe Bumblebee or something had mixed, messed up. Heard it here first. Dax Shepard canceled Transformers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I get a call from Michael Bay here shortly. <laughs> Anywho, go ahead, Erica. So um, that creates a fun community where parents are posting as they build the boxes and their kids in them, and it's it's really fun. And we have this direct relationship in talking to those parents in that community. So I think that's a huge part, mm -hmm. again, of how we are there for them and provide cool experiences for them along the way. I, I want to make sure I don't forget about this. I've read somewhere a TikTok. Was it a residency? What's happening with that? Yeah, so we're engaging different content creators on TikTok to um, create new content around our products. And again, just bring those real life parenting moments and share them. So again, we're all in this together. It's not easy and we're here for you. Yeah. So much of business in an environment where every marketplace feels crowded and there's too many things striving for your attention. The thing that makes a difference is the connection and this feeling of community. Y'all seem to have tapped into that in a way that feels meaningful to your customers, to this community. What is the biggest or first piece of advice that you would give to founders, CEOs, whoever, who are just trying to unlock how do you actually build community? I know. Number one, star in the good place. <laughs> so that's, a, that's my first bit of advice. Keep yourself on the good place. Yeah. And then get yourself in Frozen. Yeah. Another great move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's staying authentic and staying quirky. At least that's what it is for me. Your adjective beyond authentic might be different than mine, but being authentic, like running this, I say running very loosely because I know Erica does all the work, but running this company like it's a small scrappy company, mm -hmm. no matter how big it gets mm -hmm. at any point, always thinking of that there are other human beings on the, mm -hmm. there are human beings on the other end mm -hmm. of these 
transactions and trying to make them feel the, the least amount like transactions as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but truly feeling that feeling when you're around a round table and you're like scrappy and it's new and you're starting a company and you want to be as authentic as possible. And for me, it's like being quirky, even if we're taking risks and taking chances and doing bizarre things that no one else is doing. That's what I think isolates us as different and unique. And that's would be my advice uh, as to what to keep or use as your driving force. Yeah, yeah. Mine is um, you, you actually have to believe in your story, not just you've come up with a good one, but you have to actually personally believe yeah. in your story. And mine is class warfare. I have a huge class warfare chip on my shoulder, and I think it was obnoxious you couldn't get organic wipes if you weren't rich. Mm. I believe in that. That's real. Yeah. For me, when yeah. I go out and say that, I'm sincere and I really, really believe that. And I think it's easy to craft something that sounds right, but it's actually not your the fire in you. And I just think it's really important that you know what your story is. And when you go out and talk about it, it really rises in your body as you're talking about it. And I'll build off that one second because yeah. I think this is important. I you wasn't done. <laughs> 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 Too bad. So when... You know, when you say, like, what piece of advice would you give? Like, a yeah. lot of these panels yeah. do that. Yeah. So Dax just gave a great piece of advice, but it's actually not word advice. What he said, I think, is really important. I want to put an exclamation point on it. You have to feel it in your body. Yeah. It's not words. It's not, oh, I've written this out. Hey, can you... Can you look this over and edit it? Yeah, it's a great mission statement. No, when you read that mission statement, does something happen inside your chest? Do you feel a burning in your body? Do you feel the urge to expand on it, but then have to keep it to an economy of language because this is the only print you have? Like, do you feel passionate about it? And we say all these words like passion and authenticity, yeah. but I think a lot of times people forget that you have to kind of lock yourself in a dark closet and say, but am I feeling that? Is mm. it real? Make no mistake. The um, competing panel with Dr. Scholes down the hall, <laughs> his feet hurt. I promise you that. You don't build Dr. Scholes <laughs> unless your feet are on fire. Yeah. Yeah. I even saw you when you were talking about that. Do you feel it? You started preaching like you feel even saying that yeah I think people for, I think people forget to feel it I yeah. mean may, maybe I'm making a weird assumption but I I find so often like we're, we're transferring information via email and we're we're saying all the things and getting all the advice but the stopping to feel is it real and that's one thing Dax is really yeah. good at because like he calls us or anybody anything we're involved in even our kids immediately the bullshit meter goes off if he's like but are you really do you really feel it well and and consumers can tell yeah, yeah. consumers can tell you know um what was the name of the reindeer <laughs> oh God. i'm stuck on this I don't, I don't even think she gave it a name but what too, i it is too too short-lived <laughs> Damn. Yeah. But it was in her you bedroom. Know, in certain cultures, they don't name the baby for like three months. That's, <laughs> I think she was like, let's see if we make it through the Christmas holidays. And then I'll. How did I'll you make pennants? Oh, I. Um, Groveled. What'd you say? Groveled. Yeah, yeah, big time <laughs> groveled. Um, explain the situation, which did not matter to her at all. Yeah. Um, you know, then explained why we couldn't be in the living room for a day because it was too smoky. Um, I sat outside for a while with the burning um, logs because, again, the fire... <laughs> we had to transfer cutting. them out of the fireplace while oh they God. were... Yeah. And and I had to, like, wait outside with them in this big bucket. Um, I, it was just time. Time heals all wounds. And uh, she said things to me like, you didn't see that I pulled it next to my um, bunk bed to sleep with it for oh. the last week? And I was like, oh, oh, my God. I was, like, throwing away wrapping paper. I didn't see that. I want to name the reindeer who left this world too do soon. It, I'm feeling it. Rhoda. Rhoda. That's a nice Okay, R.I.P. Rhoda. I, I apologize. Rhoda. Like, okay. Rhoda. Rhoda. One day, <laughs> we'll see her again. It's adjacent to Rudolph. I yeah. like it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Y'all are talking about authenticity. And one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, again, he's the living mic, room is you. so cold. Oh, Can I light three. you a blaze tonight? You're, I like that. I like that. Y'all both were talking about authenticity and what it means to connect and how you have to be truthful about it. But a thing I always wonder about celebrities who do it as well as y'all do is like, what are your lines and what are your boundaries? I'm sure a lot of people who like y'all and what you do 
can follow you through all your channels and feel like they know you. I do it. I'd be like, because I've been following y'all for years. I like y'all. I'll see you post a thing. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sis. Yeah, brother. And, I, and I'm like, I know them. I don't know them, right? And you're not showing me all of your life. You can't. Oh, we are. There's not you. much left. But I'm saying... What is that line and what is that boundary and how do you set it? We are going to have sex in Atlanta tomorrow. Um, that'll be the first time. Is there time a calendar in a, invite? In a little bit. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, let you, that was the last bit of info we hadn't released, uh -huh. I think. Uh -huh. But uh, that's it's going to be a while. I'm going to start talking about that zero waste factory of ours. Oh. <laughs> But like See, everything is on the table with him. That's what like it seems like it's a joke, but it's not. It's everything's okay. on the table. Um, I'll just say, can I say that one thing? Um, I would be guessing, but I do think some of the reason people have liked us is I think we have tried our hardest to be really honest about the fact that like we didn't meet, I didn't meet Princess Anna and then it was a cakewalk. Nor did she meet Crosby from Parenthood and it was a blast. It's a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. It's some crazy fights. COVID was insane. Thank God we're still together. Like, we're, I think we've been really, really um, transparent about the fact that for people who might think we're relationship goals, that's super flattering, but we also uh, work at it a ton. And, mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's going to be endless work. It's like sobriety. It's like anything. It's like fitness. It's anything I value. It's a ton of work. Mm -hmm. And I think somehow people responded to that. And I think feeling that, for us, it became really easy to then double down on that f in perpetuity. We're, we're, we committed to this thing, which is like, yeah, yeah, we get free T-shirts and ride in a limo sometimes. Also, her kid hates her because she killed her animal. You know, like these... <laughs> her animal has a name, I Rhoda. Think, I think there's, some, there's something about us you know, trying our best to own... Uh, the, the side that's not very glamorous or fancy is is at work. In well, also, because that's not the most interesting side. And again, being storytellers, that there's nothing funny about perfection, and we will always favor the funny over everything else. The glamorous stuff is like, it's nice once in a while in a picture, but it doesn't stay, it doesn't hold. And the I think what translated when you started saying all the stuff about how much work I was... Yeah. To be with, uh, <laughs> was that like it? Um, I think in the in the, and I'll draw a parallel to Hello Bello in that our you know our community is like, hey, it's really really hard to be a parent. It's you do not look for your missing puzzle piece. It does not hmm. exist. You are not an almost unfinished puzzle. You are a fucking mess, <laughs> and you find someone else who's a fucking mess, and you both handshake and agree to work on it, and that's. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to not make it glamorous, yeah. but yeah. you don't need your perfect match. You need someone who is simply willing to work on it. Yeah. And that's all there is. Yeah. That's I, absolutely all there is. I can tell when you're getting into it. You go. You can it. see when I get excited when you're I'm coming me forward. <laughs> preaching. I like it. I like it. Um, it's also cover fire. I'll be honest. It's cover fire. When yeah. your mission statement is perfection mm -hmm. as a company, I've seen it. You had better be perfect. Yes. <laughs> you had really better be perfect or you're going to court. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> you know, in some weird way, too, it's helpful to, rec you know, to, yeah. to be flaws first. But yeah. telling a flaws first messy story, I hope, because I actually, like, I care about what the world feels. I care about like the 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 everyone's emotions like jumbling together. Whether it's like the world is really sad or the world can be happy today. Like I want everybody to have this alleviation of pressure off their shoulders mm. of like, oh, I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. wrong. Whether it's in the parenting space or the relationship space, because we're both very difficult to be with. We're difficult people, yeah. but we uh -huh. make it work. <laughs> yeah, Erica. <laughs> it's great being in business with you. <laughs> Fifteen years. In 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 getting ready for this panel and become and doing diaper one hundred and one to be up here with y'all, the first thing you realize is that like, damn, the diaper industry like actually needs fixing. Like diapers are a thing that you need for like civilized life to happen because if if the babies can't have a diaper, the baby can't go to childcare, so the parents can't work, and if the parents can't work, the economy will stop. So, like, everybody actually needs diapers. And there's some tragic 
data about kids who don't get changed, how many developmental wow. issues they end up wow. tracking. Like yeah. the baby to baby's got amazing yeah. um, information yeah. about that, where it's like, yeah. it's, it's imperative. Totally. And so we know that this is a big deal. We know the industry right here is kind of screwy in America. Y'all are giving away tons of diapers. Y'all are seeing during the pandemic, some companies raising prices by 184%. Y'all could open up five Hello Bellows and fix some of the problem, but not all of it. For you, Erica, what is a big fix for the industry itself that would make things better diaper-wise for parents? Yeah, so I think there is an opportunity to create um, almost like a food stamps program for diapers. And so huh. we've been working with... Um, why isn't there one? That makes sense. That is, no? that is a great why, why question. Why isn't there one? There, that's a great question. And so we found some partners in the industry that we've been talking with to try to figure out how we as a Hello Bell as a company could help join that community and join people together to help solve that problem. Are y'all talking to governments? So we Federal, are talking state, to governments, local? feathers. We've got a lot of um, people talking mm. on the legislation side. Kristen's super passionate about it. She's popping up again. Um, yeah. But even just at the smallest level, not small, but we hope it, it'll grow big, is we've launched what we call the Diaper Registry Fund. And mm. this is a kind of GoFundMe meets a baby registry, and it allows people to kind of crowdsource funding for diapers. And people have used it. We used it when we um, did our big donation to the Ukraine. People use it for individuals. People use it for families. Um, it's, it's really exciting to see how our community has taken that platform we've given them and start using it in unique ways. And we're excited to see how that grows. What yeah. that actually means is that any of you right now, if you know a caregiver that's struggling, you can go onto the Diaper Registry Fund on Hello Bello. You can create them a page and they or you can send it out and, and have it be a registry and they can donate directly to that registry and then get however many diapers that money comes out of. Like you can set up a page for someone. It's combining the great like helpful aspects of text yeah. and tech and community giving and you can give to anybody. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's like once you start to think about it, you're like, oh, there are many people in this room today who wouldn't be able to be here if there weren't diapers. Like it affects, mm -hmm. the chain of it affects all of us. What do you think, and this is for all y'all, are you hopeful that governments will step in to help with this problem? How hard do you think that will be? If that's what y'all want, like if you want food stamps for diapers. I think that, some, that as requires... some of our representatives themselves start wearing diapers, which seems soon, <laughs> it'll hit home in a way that I think we'll finally have their ear. Okay. Touché. Make diapers a part of social security and then reverse engineer that down to the babies. But do you see it happening? Like, do you see, are you hopeful for progress in the government space on this kind of thing? I think it's going to be, have to be led by the communities. So I think it's going to be companies like Hello Bello partnering with companies like Walmart, partnering with individuals and figuring out how we move this forward and start testing it um, and find ways to do it and then bringing in the government. But yeah. I don't think it's going to be easy. I think yeah. it's going to, it doesn't. Um, happen until people get loud. That's how every problem gets solved. People yep. got to get loud and the loudness is annoying and then we get fatigued by the loudness and we're like, everybody's complaining. But it's because what they're complaining about is worthy and it's been a problem for way mm -hmm. too long. And I think that there's so much work that needs to do like in the maternity leave and the time I mean, there's just, there's, but I, I feel like people are, are continually working on it. It's not like a fleeting issue. People have been talking about this for a while now. And I have hope that if we stay committed to it, that it will actually, we will see a, a difference. You know, I proposed yeah. a grassroots um, mobilization of sending representatives one poopy diaper to their house. And that was shot down <laughs> by everyone else in the company. I support that. Yeah. I support that. Um, there are a lot of people hearing this chat and saying to themselves, well, I don't have kids yet. I don't know if I want them. If I have some, these diapers sound cool. But they're also telling me on the stage how hard parenthood is, how precarious the supply chains for the things that I need for my baby will be. What do y'all say to people who were like, should I even have a kid? <laughs> this is a tricky one because obviously I think women bear this burden of feeling shamed by not having kids. So I just wanna say first and foremost, I'm not talking to anyone who doesn't want one 
but I can only say personally, I've been insanely lucky in life. I've got to do really incredible things. I've got to have jobs that are, are dreamy and nothing has compared at all in the slightest to being a dad. It is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. It is the total foundation for my identity now. When I have failures in life, I come home and I'm still dad. It's number one. It is for me the most transcendent experience a human can have on planet Earth. And I think everyone who's on the fence about it should leap at the opportunity. It is, it's, you can feel it's why you're here. For me personally. Yeah, but I like my naps. The babies nap. They're nappers. In fact, people think <laughs> you get that baby home, you're like, wake up, man. We're, I just, okay. we spent a lot of energy getting you here and you're going to sleep for the next 23 hours. Yeah, that <laughs> first month, they're like, they're in a coma. You'll be True, napping. True, but you're, you're also in a coma because your body's recovering if you're the, the person. Wow, well, here we go. <laughs> Fuck, this, this patriarchy is eroding quickly, and I don't... Go ahead. Kristen, what do you say to folks who are on the fence? Well, I can only tell... Look, I have... Some of my closest friends are like, I want, I want nothing to do with having kids. I will be very nice to your kids, but I don't want any part of it, and I completely respect that. Mm -hmm. For me, personally, is all I can say. When we first started talking about it, um, I ha actually took a minute and I was like, wow, I grew up in the Midwest. It was such a part of my identity. I was like, I'm going to have six kids by the time I'm 26 and they're all going to be artists and it's going to be great. And <laughs> none of that came true. And then when it came time, I was like, wait, 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 wait. I don't want like something, I feel like it's parasitic in mm. my body. I don't want something to take over my body. I don't want to take nine months off. I don't want all the, all these things started flooding my mind. And he said, why don't we? I said, your boobs will get bigger. It's worth it. And I said, okay. <laughs> so we did it. And then <laughs> I said, I did love having big boobs. I got to say, like, don't <laughs> discount how good that could make you feel. If you are a, if you are a carpenter's dream. Flat as a board and easy to nail. Okay. Oh my God. You're gonna get you're gonna get boobs for a period of time and it's going to make you just stand and stare naked in the mirror. But it didn't did they go me. away? Yeah. Well what? you tell me. <laughs> yeah, they did. But they were so awesome while they Stop were here. playing, Sam. You can see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, what he did is he said, Hey, we have a lot of friends who are mainly comedians who are super negative. Just mm. really negative people. He was like, Let's ask all our grumps if they would do it again. Huh. All our grumpy people who had friends. And every single one of them was like, oh, yeah, it's unmissable. Apparently. Uh, on planet Earth, you got to do it. So I was like, okay, I'll take that into consideration. Then we got pregnant, and I will um, echo what Dax said, is that every problem I had, the second I had the baby, every problem I had was right-sized. Mm. My like any narcissism came down by so much. Ego came down by so much. Uh. Like of course, survival went way up and I started dreaming about not feeding the baby and then that was a whole thing. But the the identity you have at home, you're completely in control of and that's kind of the dream. You're not in a workforce that can fire you or reviews that can be bad or critical about you. You go home and as long as you treat that little person with love and respect, it's what you're, most times, if they're rested, gonna get in return and it's there's so much self-esteem involved when i see my girls play together it's the closest thing i can imagine to like what heroin feels like damn i mean i, well, I think i've lost my right to talk on this topic <laughs> <laughs> all right we got like 10 minutes left and i want to get to audience questions they're already here up on the screen um the first one comes from Rhoda the reindeer? It says, why did you do that to me? <laughs> we I'm had no choice. We I'm had to keep our family warm. <laughs> no, that's not true. We're authentic. I'm a messy person, Rhoda, and I'm sorry. And this is my formal amends. <laughs> okay. In earnest, uh, Darlene Fisk writes, quote, how do you run a business to get, where did I put it? It moved. How do I run a business together? Yeah, Sorry, I saw it right. happen, Sam. That was not your fault. No, I know. Yeah, whoever's running this, this it said, "How do you run a business together without ripping off each other's heads?" Uh, love a weird Austin resident. I want all three of you to tackle this. Well, we though the reason we survived is because the we learned to fight. 
you learn there's a way to fight correctly. Mm, please tell me how because I don't know you. Well, it involves a therapist. It involves a mediator giving you the tools. Everybody's born with a teeny tiny toolbox, like a Barbie toolbox, right? And mm. your whole life is spent putting more tools into it, whether it's, oh, I know when I need to breathe. I know when I need to take a break from this person. Um, you learn the tools to fight correctly. We disagree on 99.9% of things on the planet. And That's that not is- true. <laughs> Sounds Boom! like a disagreement. It was right there on a silver plate. That was plate. really good. I didn't even realize I was setting yeah. you up. Um, and you, But the undercurrent of our foundation is that, at least for me, he is on my team. Yeah. He's well, on and my I team. respect He's the shit out of you. Like I, I'm different from you, but I've watched you be opposite of me and have everything go your way. I can visually see the effect you have on human beings around you, and although it's opposite of me, I recognize it and I respect it. And I'm not built like you, but man, do I see it. Yeah. So yeah. I want to hear her opinion. I want her perspective. I think she likes mine. I think. We're such opposites that when we can collaborate and meet in the middle, it's generally something really good. And yeah. it's really servicing probably both ends of all the spectrums when we can do that. What's it called when you know a little bit about a topic and you feel like you're an expert and then you know a lot about The Dunning-Kruger it? effect. Okay, it's Dunning-Kruger. So okay. you, when you, like... Um, that felt set up. Didn't it feel set up? <laughs> like I knew that. It worked. No, it was real smooth. Yeah, I'm going to ask you. You'll look smart. I'll, and he'll say Dunning-Kruger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you have to... Well, now I don't even remember where I was going with it. <laughs> Do you th- can you think of a way that I was trying to apply that to this? <laughs> that's a great. You brought up Dunning Kruger effect. So that's. Do you know what that is? You know, no. you know that's popular now. Um, it's generally if you put ten people together, the person who knows the least about a topic will talk the most about it. And he'll be a man. Bizarre. Yes. And he'll be the a man. The smarter people are, kind of the less they say about things. Yeah, okay. it's it's people that use the word supposedly, impossibly. Like generally, those are the experts. So what I was just gonna say is like the more the more you think you know, the I promise with Dunning Kruger, the less that you know. And I don't think I know everything, even though a lot of things go my way. I actually know that his perspective is mandatory to me fully thinking through an issue. And vice versa. Huh. Unless it's about my outfit, because... No. <laughs> nor, nor do I ever. I want you to yeah. chime in on how you work with them without ripping their heads off. Well, it's never a dull moment. I will definitely start with that. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's a health, back to the healthy respect thing. Like, Kristen will call me and say, hey, I have a question on this and this. And her questions are great. And she will probe into the you know most interesting things that I haven't even thought of and just pause. It gives me a great opportunity to just pause and really kind of go down that rabbit hole and figure out, like I said, Dax will call me out on my BS. So I know that like the minute I say something, he will call me out. He will dig into um, the business aspects and really drill me and make sure he knows um, everything that's going on and that he feels comfortable with where we're going. So it's, again, a healthy respect. I know they're doing it because they care so much about the business and the brand. And they also, I know they trust me to make the right decisions to move forward. It's if we have not goal. said that loud enough, we have been blessed with Erica. B- Bl- like, blessed. beyond. Yeah, we were able to launch it, but we were not able to keep it running. And Erica has come in and really made miracles happen. She has with, been the key to so yes, many yes, different things yeah. because of her brilliance. Yeah. Well, let me detour from audience questions and then just like let you give a piece of advice for folks who might need it. You're an executive now at a very successful company, have been an executive at others. You get this shit, you're doing well at it. Someone in that room is trying to start something. First and best piece of advice you give them. I think it's who you hire. So I think, you know, we've talked a lot about authenticity and brand and community and trying to build that, but it starts from within first. So it's, you've got to build that team that represents what you're trying to portray externally. So for us, making sure every single person that we hire internally, quite frankly, it's a lot of parents. So I think there's a lot of questions about like, how do you stay close to your community? We're all parents. I have three kids. My head of marketing has a kid. Like We all have kids and we spend a lot of time during work talking about all of those parenting moments that we're having um, personally. So I think For me, it's all about how do I look internally first and make sure I'm building the community I want internally so that then we can go build that community externally. Yeah, yeah. We got one from Olivia Orozco. She says, quote, how does Hello Bello prioritize inclusivity and diversity within its brand, company, and community? I'll take it. Well, I mean, there's... 
I'm so glad that this is actually a question now, by the way, because I yeah. really think that the transparency is super important. Well, even getting the question asked is probably. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Question. Yeah. So, like she was saying, like, how, what's our percentage of women now? I, it's From my over perspective, 60%. it's like a hundred percent women there. Um, <laughs> that's not an official data set, but it feels like it's one hundred percent. The percentage of women is, that um, are working in the company are sixty percent now, roughly around. Yeah, I think, and then and all in lead roles. Yeah. yeah, mostly mothers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish we had the statistic on that as well. But we also realize that like there are pockets of our communities, particularly ones that we want to make the uh, f the intersection of affordability and accessibility. Um, really hit like our hair is different in our shampoo lines we created it for white hair we created it for Caucasian hair it yeah. doesn't work on black hair so we have been like studying with black hair stylists people who know who know and style and there is a completely different like molecular oh, yeah. level of moisture that needs to go into it you yeah. cannot strip that so like we've been on a learning curve for because we have no experience yeah. with it for with a couple different um incredible black hairstylists trying to develop products that will not just be sort of like a one for all that's a very beautiful yeah. idea that's but it doesn't possible. no it doesn't <laughs> work possible. no and we don't we don't want to leave out any um members of the community so we're es essentially trying to like isolate what specifically needs and because when you look at like true diversity, there's a lot of people that can use a regular shampoo. The black community can't. So we're currently like learning and trying yes. to figure out how we can give the best product there yeah. within our company. Yeah. Some black people don't use shampoo at all. Yeah. <laughs> Some have been liberated from their shampoo Free. shackles. Yeah. Free. <laughs> I think we got time for one more audience question. Y'all pick. Which one of these do y'all want? Oh, I like the um, Laura's question. El Mogabar? No. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, that was all right. Oh, I'm good. I'm okay, dyslexic. Read it to, the, I'm, to the audience. Uh, uh, well, when you say it, they go away. It's no, it's at the top. Oh, the top. <laughs> they move oh, it up I'm for you. I'm dumb they move it up. at reading this monitor. Um, how have your daughters inspired aspects of the brand? I like this one because our children are the guinea pigs for every product that would end up on your child. So Erica sends boxes of our vitamin line to try 25 different flavors. And we're like, come on girls, get on the counter and we just make them, these little brats eat 25 gummies. <laughs> I have boat. rubbed every liquid product we have into their skin. Yeah, It's yeah. like been the like, like a fabric test, like how many rubs until it irritates. Yeah. Like truly because the part of it was that we, like Dax was saying, you have to believe your story. I have yeah. to want to use these. We use Hello Bella products. Yeah. And when we were originally creating it, we were getting all these unmarked bottles, and I was looking at them, and I'm like, well, I think I, this is sunblock. I know. I hope this is sunblock. I, sun sun I know what I've committed to, and you are my testing units. So get in the bath, and we're going to wash your hair a couple times, or we're, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then also paying attention to the, um, the specific needs of our kids, like, uh, again, looking for those niches of what aren't we hitting? What do specific kids have? My kids have eczema. So figuring out like the everywhere balm that we have that's like petroleum free but can go on their eczema without burning and I, we test absolutely everything on them. I love it, I love it. We have 52 seconds and I'm a stickler for time. What should we do? So we're going to wrap. I won't need all 50 seconds to be honest. Yeah? Referring to Saturday in Atlanta. <laughs> Prob Are you going to take us home? You're going to wrap this up? <laughs> uh, now we've got 32 seconds. So I want to use the last half minute of time to dedicate this entire event today to Rhoda the Reindeer. Yeah, um, in we memory. We'll never forget her and her legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we all we'll make mistakes. And I'm just here to make an amends to each and every one of you now that my story is public. I will say one upside. So it, when you're a parent, you spend uh, like all this energy, you plan some vacation, and you come to find out they don't remember one thing until, I don't know, they're eight. They just started remembering stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? I took you on a daddy-daughter trip to Asheville, North Carolina. That was yeah. a pain in the ass. You don't remember <laughs> at all that? No, they yeah. don't. Yeah. But guess what? They don't remember Rhoda either. There you go. So sometimes you're note. saved by it. Yeah. They also forget the terrible things you do. Yeah. yeah. On that note, <laughs> thanks to this room. Thanks to Erica and Kristen and Dax. Thanks to South by Southwest. 
We did it. This was delightful. Thank you all for the lovely chat. Thanks I so really much, Sam. It. It so much fun.